In the previous video in this playlist, I called that T210. I illustrated a classic test of the sample mean, and now I'd like to illustrate the classic test of a sample variance. And where, we, as we used the student's t-distribution to test a sample mean, here we use a chi-square statistic to test the sample variance. And so here's the problem statement, just for example. A fund manager claims that volatility for the fund is no more than 30%. But we observe a sample volatility over 30 periods that is 40%. And the question is, do we believe the fund manager? And so here I have the input assumptions. Our sample size is 30. And our degrees of freedom, as in the test of the sample mean, is n minus 1 or 29. And that's because in computing the sample variance, we need to use a sample mean not having a population mean. So we're using part of the data to compute this sample variance. We consume a degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. And now in, in, as inputs here, I have the variances. Because the chi-square statistic is a test of the sample variance. So our sample variance is 40% squared or 0.16. That's what we observe. And our null hypothesis is the 30% squared. That's 0 0.090. And again, it's a one-sided null. It's not the typical two-sided null. A typical two-sided null would be the null hypothesis that the true population variance is 30% squared. In this case, the null is that the true population variance is equal to or less than 30% squared. So our chi-square statistic is a pretty straightforward ratio and so this is supposed to be a Greek chi, not an x, but with certain degrees of freedom is going to be equal to our observed sample variance divided by our null hypothesized population variance multiplied by the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. And as before, it's a, a Roman s for the sample and a Greek sigma for the population. Roman for samples, Greek for populations. And in this case then, we observed, right, we observed the 40% uh, is the observed sample and we're hypothesizing about a null of 30% squared multiplied by 29 equals, you can see our test statistic here of 51.56. And so then the test of that is similar to the student's T, or the idea is, and in, that, in the sense that we have a chi-squared distribution, unlike the student's T, which was symmetrical, this one is, uh, has positive skew, but otherwise the concept is similar in the sense that our degrees of freedom is informing the shape, and then a confidence level returns for us the associated distributional quantile. So I just selected 95%, and here I've got a two-tailed 95%. So the, um, in the, my spreadsheet, in, in any case, re returns two rejection regions. We're only going to be concerned with the one side. But at two-tailed 95%, and given the shape implied by these degrees of freedom, I'm going to get a, a value or quantile over here, and a value or quantile over here that give me 2.5% of the area under the curve here, plus 2.5% of the area under the curve equals the 95%. So over on the right, you can see region of reject on the right side. It's returned for me by Excel with the chi-squared inverse uh, right tail. So this is an inverse cumulative distribution function, and it's giving me 45.7. Okay. Our critical value was 51.56, so it's falling out here in the tail. It's too far out. We reject the null. In other words, we find that, well, sampling variance makes it conceivable that our 40%, which is high enough that we could get out here, but at 95%, very unlikely, we're going to reject the null that this um, true population uh, volatility is 30% or variance is 30% squared because we're out here. So you can see, you can imagine that if um, the sample came in at 
35%, let's say, instead of 40%, we would get a test statistic here of 39, which would be less than the 45.7. And in that case, we wouldn't reject the null hypothesis that the true variance is less than or equal to 30% squared. So I'll put that back to 40%. And then you can see here in the, in the spreadsheet, I've got the confidence interval. So that's a little trickier than with the sample mean, just because we've only got a ratio. And so again, we started with a chi squared, whoops, chi squared with certain degrees of freedom is equal to sample variance divided by population variance times degrees of freedom. So that if we solve for the um, population variance, right, multiply both sides by the population variance, then we're going to get sample, um, sample variance times degrees of freedom divided by the uh, chi-square. Oh, so such that if you look right here for my lower bound, that's this value here. It's that sample of 0.4 of 40% squared times 29 degrees of freedom divided by my chi-squared statistic, 45.7, and that equals the 0.101 right here, 0.101, which is a variance. So if we take the square root of it, running out of space a little bit, then we get 31.9%. That's why this confidence interval here is a little trickier, you can see, because we have to uh, invert out and solve for the population, um, the population variance. But if we do that here, just on the lower bound, we get 31.9%, multiply it by and right here, and you can see that's consistent with uh, rejecting the null here. The 31.9%, we, we observed uh, 40% and our confidence interval goes down to 31.9%, but it doesn't quite encompass uh, the 30% as well. So um, the confidence interval is consistent with uh, rejecting the null. And I also have in here uh, spreadsheets that, uh, in the spreadsheet, the computation of the p-value. But I hope that's a hopeful explanation of a test of the uh, sample variance. The only other thing I would add, um, oftentimes um, neglected, is just this idea that that we use a chi-square variable, and um, the chi-square distribution does characterize a series of summed a summation of independent uh, standard normal variables denoted by z. So z1, z2, z3. Um, it's a summation of those that is characterized by the chi-squared that we're using, and they're, these are standard normals. The implicit assumption in using this chi-square test is that the population is, in fact, normal. So we're assuming a normal population. Thank you very much.